I asked you guys on Twitter to ask me some questions and I thought I would answer them, but I really wanted to take a bath. So I was gonna film this other video tonight. I have a very big day tomorrow. I have a meeting with somebody incredible. And so I can't uh, have this skin. So basically what's happening is I started using some new skincare because I wanted to try it out and see. I got a package from Sigma and they sent over like the whole line of Sunday Riley stuff and I was so freaking excited. I started using the Tidal cream and oh wow what a breakout. <laughs> it broke out all up on my face here, my forehead is all little bumps and my chin. So I'm not 100% sure that it is the Tidal that did it but it's the only thing different that I actually did so it, I'm 100% sure. <laughs> Tonight, what I'm gonna be doing is trying out a new skincare that I've never done before, which is a terrible idea. However, the reason I'm doing this is because Samantha Ravendahl said that the Drunk Elephant Sukari Baby Facial is amazing and will give me baby skin. So if it doesn't give me baby skin, Samantha, and tomorrow I break out before my important meeting, I am blaming you. So before we get into that, I'm going to just remove what current makeup I have on and I'm gonna be using my Clarisonic and my cleanser, the BioClarity cleanser. And then I am going to put my mask on and we're gonna answer some questions, baby. Before we get into the video, make sure you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You guys can also follow me on all my other social media stuff. Everything is Raw Beauty Christy. So Instagram and Twitter, that is it. And uh, let's, let's answer your questions. Yeah, I'm wearing a bra in the bath, okay? I didn't want you guys getting a nip slip. You don't want that either, I promise. Wow, I told you guys to ask me anything on Twitter about 15 minutes ago and there's 130 questions. I thought there'd be like 11, so I was wrong. Kate says, what is one piece of advice you want to give those who struggle with confidence slash self-image? I mean, I feel like I've done videos on this in the past, so this is probably just repetitive, but it is truly looking at life in perspective. And I know I've talked about this a million times, so I don't wanna be a broken record. I'm gonna link up here two videos that I have done discussing like, you know, how you shouldn't care about it, what others think about you. But it, it, other than that, if you're wanting to like, just have a better self image, like look in the mirror and not hate yourself, it just takes practice. Like quit talking down on yourself. Don't, ah, I got soap in my eye. Don't talk down on yourself. If you notice you're talking down on yourself, like make it a habit that you like knock that shit off because it is not helpful in the slightest. You only want good things to happen to you and nothing good can come from talking down to yourself or talking down on yourself or saying negative things about yourself to yourself. I just said yourself like 47,000 times. It's gonna get nothing done. All it's gonna do is make you feel shitty. So just honestly, try to make it a solid effort to only say good things about yourself. And if you find yourself like gearing towards the negative, imagine that you're looking at your younger child self and saying those things to yourself. Like if you were to look at a version of yourself as a kid, like imagine 10 year old you walked into the room, look at that kid in the eyes and say to them all the things that you're thinking about yourself. Like you're fat, you're ugly, you're stupid. Imagine that that's what you're doing and that it, that's, that's exactly how negative it is you're talking to yourself like you would never speak to a kid that way and Just because you're older doesn't mean that you're not Equally as important and so you need to talk to yourself the way that you would lift up a 10 year old kid like tell yourself that you're awesome Don't sit there and down yourself and uh, I feel like I've gone so much into this Let's move on to the next question. Um, she also says, what, what is one piece of marriage advice you have for people? Let me wash my Clarisonic because that is hideous. I really like Clarisonic, but I have one massive gripe, and that is that this thing takes 18 hours to charge. 18 hours. Yes, you heard me right. And it stays charged for like 25 minutes. It doesn't even plug in, so it's like the least efficient charger in the world. You like set it on top of the charger. What the hell were you thinking, Clarisonic? Okay, one piece of marriage advice that I have. Everyone says this and it sounds so cliche and literally it's like the most not cliche thing in the world. Trust and communication are number one. You can literally not survive with somebody for a huge length of time if number one, you don't trust them and if number two, you guys don't communicate about really important things. Zach and I make it a point that if we're feeling anything about each other or if we're feeling negativity towards each other, try to see the other side, but also talk about it. And so we're really open and honest with each other because we find that if for some reason we start to like pull apart from each other and kind of distance from each other, we notice it like is massively dampening our relationship. And if we just are really honest with each other and talk about our fears and concerns and everything like that, like get your lives healthy, get your minds healthy, talk all the time, don't lie to each other. And that sounds so cliche, but even little minuscule lies 
matter. Like, don't lie to each other at all because this is the person that you've said you're gonna spend the rest of your life with. And it is hard when, you know, when you're around somebody so often. I mean, you're around them every single day for crying out loud. So you just gotta treat them like they're your absolute best friend because essentially they are. And you wouldn't lie to your best friend. You're honest and open and that's what you gotta do. So that's my best marriage advice. I, oh, well. Hopefully you're fully waterproof. Lindsay says, how did your husband propose? I think I've talked about this in a live stream before. It was Valentine's Day. I oh, know. I had no idea that he was going to do it. So basically we went for a hike on Valentine's Day and he took me up to this really beautiful, I wouldn't call it a mountain. It's definitely a mountain, but it's not like hard to hike. Like it takes about an hour and it's like, kind of a leisurely stroll up. I mean, it's a little difficult, but there's a picnic bench halfway up. And he was like, pick out some food that you wanna bring on a hike and anything you want, babe, anything you want in the world. And me being ultra white trash, I was like, okay, corn dogs and macaroni and cheese. And he was like, well, he was like, are you sure you don't want like fruit and like, you know, cheese and like we can make like a little snack and I was like, no, nah, dude, I want a corn dog and I want a bowl of mac and cheese and I don't care how we got it transported. That sounds so fucking good. It is Valentine's Day. Let's do it. And he was like, wow. <laughs> he was probably thinking in that moment, like I'm about to propose to this bitch with a belly full of mac and cheese. But mm. anyway, so we hiked up the mountain, stopped halfway, ate our corn dog and mac and cheese. It was super romantic. We got up to the top and it was sunset. It was absolutely stunning. It was a beautiful day. I mean, we couldn't have asked for a more beautiful day. And we got all the way up to the top and we were just standing there looking at the sunset and he was acting all funny and like turned over and kissed me and I was like, what's up? And then he gets down on one knee and I literally just start screaming, really, 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 really? And he asked me to marry him. I literally don't remember the words that came out of his mouth. I think he just asked like, will you marry me? Or he might've said like a speech or something. I don't know because I was screaming in his face. I said really so many times that he was like, that's a yes. And I was like, oh my God, of course. And then we hugged and kissed and I legitimately could not wait to tell my family. And this is a time before like, cell phone service we got engaged in like 2008 yeah we got married in 2010 yeah i mean i did i have a cell phone i might have had a cell phone i'm honestly not even sure uh, i feel like this is going to be a bad thing for my skin i'm scared but i'm just going to do it anyway it says here apply an even layer to clean dry skin no more than one to two times per week leave on for 20 minutes rinse thoroughly with lukewarm water and pat dry and then yeah so i ran down the mountain to oh that burns. Hi! Ow, 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 ow. Ooh, I don't know if I can handle that pain. Holy shit. It's like horrifyingly painful. Sammy didn't tell me this. Oh, wow. It literally, and I am not exaggerating when I say this, it literally feels like needles poking me all over my skin. Oh, right here is really bad. Wow, I don't think 20 minutes is gonna happen. Oh my dear Jesus in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Holy shit. Wow, if you have super sensitive skin, do not use this. And you know what? I just read a bunch of Sephora reviews because I was like, bitch, you'll be fine. And then I read a bunch of reviews and somebody was like, I have really, really sensitive skin and it doesn't bother me. I don't have sensitive skin and this is bothering me. Alicia says, has the renovation started on your house yet? I can't wait to see it when it's done. By the way, you're amazing. I love your videos. Oh, thank you so much. I love you. Renovation starts in like two weeks. So I am excited. I am ready. Kelsey says, what are your top three YouTubers that you love and want to collab with? Love you, Christy. Love you too, Kelsey. Top three YouTubers. That's really tough. Um, number one YouTuber I want to collab with is Shane Dawson. I don't think that's... Um, Surprise anybody. <laughs> Good Mythical Morning, I would want to collab with Rhett and Link. And currently, right now, it is Manny MUA because he asked me if I wanted to collab with him on Twitter. And I said, Oh, you fucking bet your ass I do. I don't know. I'm so open to any and all collabs. Oh my god, Mr. Kate. Uh, I would die. Oh. I licked my upper lip. It tasted like acid. I would also die to collab with Amelia Fart. I just love her with my entire heart, but I would honestly pale in comparison to her, so I don't know how good that would go. Destiny says, what would be your best advice to someone struggling with weight and body confidence? Anybody that asks about body confidence or anything like that, I'll, I'll link any videos that I have like up in the eye. Otherwise, I will link them in the description of this video. So if you guys are looking for videos on like body confidence, I've done quite a few, so definitely keep an eye out there. 
So if that's why I skipped over your question because I want you guys to watch those videos or I will try to make a video about other ways to get confidence but I feel like I've covered most of it in those like how to not give a shit what people think about you or um, videos like that like uh, honestly I feel like those are very similar in my thoughts of how to have confidence. Ola says what makeup skill took you the longest to master and what did you seem to struggle with the most while learning how to do makeup? Honestly I feel like eyeshadow in general like blending eyeshadow was my most struggled area because for the longest time I just couldn't figure it out and what I realized is I was watching a video of Jaclyn Hills a long long time ago and she was like blend until your hand falls off and I was like got it because I wasn't blending enough I wasn't giving it enough time and so I feel like eyeshadow was my biggest thing I'm still learning I mean to this day I feel like I learn a new technique all the time um, and to get my skin to look really good that I used to really cake makeup on and still I'm trying to stop doing that because I don't want to do that anymore. Inspired Artist says, what is your absolute favorite keto meal? Also, P.S. I'm happy you like the art I created of you. Love you. Oh, I love you so much. Thank you. Favorite keto meal. Um, I feel like it would probably be low carb tacos. I use the Mission Carb Balance tortilla shells and you can like brown up like ground beef, you can do avocado, um, tomato, salsa, sour cream, you can add all that stuff. And so honestly, the only thing missing is beans and beans are like only okay anyway, so it's really not that bad, but like tacos are so satisfying when you eat keto, like super satisfying. Bradley says, how did you decide to start doing YouTube? Who inspired you to start a channel in the beginning and who do you draw inspiration from currently? Ooh, good questions. I decided to start doing YouTube because I had a previous channel all about infertility because I was dealing with infertility and trying to get pregnant and all that stuff and it wasn't happening. So then I quit doing that channel because I gave up on trying and I was like, I still want to do YouTube. I love it so much. And so I was chatting with my friend Marie, bits and clips. I said, what, what should I do my channel about? And she was like, do beauty. And I was like, well, okay. She really encouraged me. She was like, you're really good at makeup. You always have cute hair. And this was back in the day when I literally did not know anything about makeup. I owned maybe one eyeshadow and it was like a trio from CoverGirl. Like that was actually it. I had never done makeup, but I always did my makeup, you know? And she was like, you, you love doing beauty stuff. You love makeup. You watch beauty people. Like at that time it was like, I think it was only like Candy Johnson and Michelle Fawn were like the only two beauty people out there. And she was like, give it a go, like try it out, see how you like it. And I was like, okay. And I did. And I realized I fell in love with it. Like I loved doing special effects makeup and I love doing like body paint. And that is why I started my YouTube channel and it's blossomed into what it is. Never could have expected that I would be in the position that I am now. Like literally in a billion years, never would expect that I would be here right now. So it's just really goes to show like if I can do it, legitimately anyone can. Who inspired you to start a channel in the beginning and who do you draw inspiration from currently? Um, in the beginning, it wasn't who inspired me to start the channel. Marie is the reason that I started a beauty channel. But people that I really looked up to in the beauty industry in the beginning, well, the beginning was so different. But the person, honestly, it's so weird to say this, but I'm going to talk about it on camera because Sam already knows this. But it was Sam. Um, and back then it was Battle Ash. And it's Samantha Ravendell now. And if you guys follow her, I was her biggest fangirl. If you scroll back on my Instagram, she was my woman crush Wednesday all the time. All my looks were inspired by her. I learned eyeshadow from Samantha. She taught me how to do a wing liner without even knowing she was teaching me. She taught me that I don't have to have the perfect shade of foundation and it's makeup is fun and it washes off. And I loved her carefree attitude. She was so beautiful. And I, she was the first person that I ever like fangirled over, like literally the first one. When she like messaged me back on Instagram one day, I was like on a public comment on her picture and I was like, you're so beautiful. Well, it was, this was like five years ago. And she messaged me back and was like, you're, you do really great makeup. I see a lot of potential in you. If you ever want to, you know, know anything else about social media, hit me up. And I thought that was like a personal thing. Little did I know Sam really does help people like that a lot. So, but I thought, wow, she wants to be my best friend. We're going to be best friends. This is the beginning of a lifelong friendship. And so I ran around my front yard, literally crying. There were tears streaming down my face and I had, had a full on fucking fangirl moment over Sam. So Sam, if you're watching, yeah, that happened. And I was like, oh my God. And so I emailed her immediately. and was like, um, oh, help me. The advice that she gave me pushed me. It really did. She was like, you need to be consistent. You need to post often. You do high quality looks. You need to work really hard on making your looks really good. This is kind of how much money you can make in the industry. And this is how things go. And I I took her advice and I freaking ran with it. And then over the years, you know, you meet people and you talk to people and you learn more, but she was a big, huge inspiration to me in the beginning. Thank you, Sam. I love you so much. And now we're friends. It's really weird. <laughs> Who do I draw inspiration from currently? I mean, everybody. There is not just one person. Um, I, I really... <laughs> 
I mean, Instagram artists, I really, uh, like, I'm trying to come up with my own looks now. I'm not trying to do as much, like, inspired or recreated things. People that inspire me in the industry are people who work really hard and who, who like, hustle really fucking hard and make things happen for themselves and don't make excuses for why they can't. Because I understand, like, I have a million excuses of why I couldn't do what I'm doing, but I just do it and because I know that the harder I work, the harder, the more it's gonna pay off. And I knew eventually it would. I really didn't know how long it was gonna take, but it has really helped. I mean, like, this is honestly, like, my dream come true, what I'm doing now. I know everybody says that fucking cliche, but swear to you, it is the most dream job in the world. And I am not able to do it without the support of people watching and subscribing and liking my videos and watching shit. And wow, this is getting sappy. I love you guys so much. Holy shit. Gracie says, if you could live in any fictional universe, what would you choose? Harry Potter, 100%. Ashley says, what did you wish you knew before starting YouTube? What is your dream destination and favorite current shows? What do I wish I knew before starting YouTube? I wish I could have told myself like, follow the trends, but make them your own. And like, don't be like other people. And I always used to say that people, you'd be like, don't be like other people, be like yourself. But I, you subconsciously like take little bits and pieces from other people. And I really just wish that I would have known, like, if you know that something isn't working, switch it up and try something new. And instead of beating yourself up over it, like if it's not working, you're doing something wrong. So make it work. Try to analyze yourself and have some self-reflection. I think that would have been something I could have really used because I used to not have any self-reflection. I used to be like, if everything else is everybody else's fault. And, I, and that's not true. Absolute dream destination. Well, it's always been Bora Bora, but I feel like I'm changing my mind on that one. Bora Bora looks so beautiful. Just the length of time it takes to get there. The Maldives look amazing. Um, right now, I really want to go to Japan. But I mean, I, I, I always used to be Bora Bora, but now honestly, like Punta Mita was so stunning. I feel like nothing can ever top it. Maybe it can, but like that place was so unreal it was unreal like the one actually the most beautiful place i've ever been in my entire life so ah god a uh, fat jesus says how do you keep the spark alive in your marriage um losing weight has been the number one uh that sounds so dumb because i can't even understand why it's happening but i feel like the more my hormones regulate like literally losing weight has been the number one thing to help our marriage we were a little rocky before that and i had no libido tmi no libido actually zero now wow yo 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 it is back and so it is um only really been like cutting down on carbs and sugar and eating less and moving more and drinking more water and getting out in the sunshine and doing things you know to be healthy for your body really brought our marriage better because then uh, my sex drive got better and then his we we both started looking at each other differently and honestly like like sometimes people get probably grossed out and annoyed by how like lovey dovey zach and i are because it is honestly puke worthy but i love him like a disgusting amount like it's honestly overwhelming and same to him with me like we are on probably tell each other we love each other like 85,000 times a day it wasn't always that way and so it honestly just been the more healthy we get and the more time we spend together and the more talking we do and just keeping each other like on the up and up always honest with each other that keeps the spark alive for us because like we know we can like fully trust each other we're best friends and like i don't know just being healthy and like being just totally 100 with each other really helps. Uh, Sierra said, how do you know Zach was the one? I knew the moment I met him, it's so weird. I know that they say like, oh, oh do you believe in soulmates? I mean, frankly, I didn't used to, but like, yeah, I'm, uh, I knew the moment I met Zach, I really did. It was like the second I met him, I was like, holy shit, I'm in love with you. <laughs> it, it was overwhelming and I, we became really good friends and then it just like, I remember the day that we he told me he loved me. We were really young and we were in high school still and I was dropping him off at his house and I was sitting with him in the car and we had this conversation and he, he was like trying to beat around the bush and then he like came out and told me he loved me and then I was like, oh my God, I fucking love you too. And then it was like, it's history from there. Claire says, do you have any tattoos planned to get? I have no tattoos. I am, I have no commitment and everything that I would have wanted back in the day, I think is so dumb now. So I'm kind of glad I didn't get them. I do have a plan to get one uh, and I want it to be just like a cute little dainty tattoo of Mad Eye um and maybe mother as well and jasmine i just think it would be nice to like get like little cute sweet line tattoos of my babies because you never are gonna hate those you know what i mean Lindsay says tell us about an embarrassing date you've been on Lindsay, i've never been on like a date with a random person it's always been like dates with my current boyfriends and those aren't embarrassing so i don't know what that's like 
Ali says, do you have an end goal with your YouTube career? If so, what is it? Like, do you want to create your own brand or not so much? It seems to be the trend currently. And I didn't know if you had any interest in that aspect of the industry. Yeah, I definitely don't have a specific end goal. The end goal for me is, so I, I kind of treat YouTube like I understand that it could possibly be fleeting. I don't, I'm not one of those people that believes YouTube's going to end tomorrow. I definitely think that there's a way to stay. The platform's not going anywhere. It's absolutely huge, but I do think it is shifting and changing. I don't necessarily have an end goal because I don't like to think of YouTube having an end. So do I want to start my own brand? Possibly. I'm, you know, always looking into things and always thinking about my future. Um, I'm really happy with the way things are going right now. And I feel like if they continue at the rate that they are, that's just going to be great. Um, yes, there are definitely going to be things in the works that are bigger than just my YouTube channel currently because it is it's, you know, dreams. And then it's also smart to have your feelers in lots of different areas. And I, I have things that I've wanted to do for a long time and I never had the means or was in the position to do them. And now I am, and I'm going to. Kirsty says, what is your favorite thing to do in Seattle? Either go walk around or a favorite place to eat. It's definitely hard because I hate driving in Seattle. It's the worst thing in the world. Like honestly, it gives me such anxiety because there's so many freaking one way streets. Uh, like my the favorite place that I've ever eaten in Seattle is eight ounce burger because they have a truffle burger there. And it is like truffle cheese and like truffle garlic aioli on like the most incredible burger I've ever had with garlic truffle fries. Truffle is like my favorite flavor of food in the entire world. So that burger is like heaven to me. So um, if you are going to Seattle, go to eight ounce burger. You will not regret. Cass says, what is the hardest accomplishment you've had? Was it worth it in the end? I feel like I could use something smaller like face awards, but the hardest thing I've ever accomplished in my life has frankly been this YouTube channel. Like for the longest time, I was such a negative ass bitch regarding this YouTube channel. I was like, I'm never gonna have subscribers. Nobody's ever gonna watch my channel. I don't even know I'm wasting my time all. And then when I quit that attitude and I was like, well, my grandpa would say this to my dad. Now my dad says this to me and it's moved down in the family. And that is, if some other son of a bitch can do it, I can do it. And that is so true. And if somebody else can do YouTube full time and have a career out of it and be successful and be able to financially support themselves and their family, why can't I do it? And so I took that mindset and I ran with it. I was like, well, if some other son of a bitch can do it, I can fucking do it. And it's true. You can do it. You just have to put your mind into it, put your head down and work hard and quit bitching and quit blaming everything on everybody else. If I look back on my old self and the jealousy I would feel and the, and the, I would feel like, why not me? And how come everybody else is getting these opportunities and not me? And you're not getting them because instead of working hard towards them, you're bitching on Twitter. And so I just put my head down and I was like, fuck this, I'm gonna work hard. And yes, worth it in the end, 100,000% happier than I could ever imagine. At K says, do you ever have self doubt or think why do X amount of people follow me? 100%, yeah. I mean, honestly, I look at myself and I'm like, well, why does anybody follow me? But then I remember that like everybody needs a friend and everybody needs to feel like they can relate to somebody. And if somebody else isn't out there to be that person for you, maybe that person is me. And maybe it's not me. Maybe you stumble upon my videos and you're like, this bitch is so fucking annoying understood you know everybody has people that they like or personalities that they like and i think that's why when people are like do you think it's too late to start on youtube no because there's a place for everybody because you may be the thing that that person over there needs and so i try not to down on myself and be like why do people even like me because i don't know maybe because they just fucking do how did me and my husband meet well we officially met on myspace um then we went to the same high school but i met him on myspace like that's where we talked for the first time and found each other i found his profile there and then i realized we went to the same school and then the rest is history, baby. She also says, did you ever wake up thinking, holy shit, how did I get here? 100%. Me and my friends were talking about this because there's some really exciting things going on behind the scenes of YouTube that I haven't talked about yet and that I'm obviously not gonna be able to talk about for a long time. Trust me, I also hate it when people do that shit. I really hate it when people say stuff like that and you're like, well, thank you for getting me intrigued and not talking about it. Me and my friends were talking about this and they were like, isn't it so crazy? And I'm like, dude, it just doesn't feel real. Like you're going through it, things are happening. You get these messages you you get these things and these opportunities and they're honestly I just sit here and I'm like am I dead like did I die and this is this isn't real like what's happening it's just honestly so unreal so every single day I wake up and go holy shit how did I get here me and Zach have many conversations every single day like we look at each other so often and we're like what is life like what even is happening how is this real 
Feels like we're in the Matrix or something, man. It's amazing. Kenzie says, when are you going to have merch? I'm dying for a good Robbie Crispy hoodie or t-shirt. I'm all about supporting my queen. Oh my God, thank you. Uh, I need to get on it. I need to get on it. I started getting people to design it for me last year. Things fell through. It wasn't that great. I do have designs that I want to work on and um, I need to just get the ball rolling. So I'm going to do that. I'll do that. Cassie says, what is your favorite thing to do for a date night with your husband? Okay. So if we're not talking eating low carb, <laughs> then I got the perfect working date. I love to go eat ramen. Okay, because ramen is my happy place. Those soft boiled eggs that you slurp up. Okay, so I like to go eat a ramen and I like to have exorbitant amounts of gyoza alongside. Then we leave there and go eat crepes because there's this really amazing crepe place. We have to travel like so far for it, but the crepes are so yummy. I know that's a really weird combo, but honestly, so yum. And so we go and eat crepes from this place and we get this like incredible banana one. We go home, listen to 90s pop music and Tenacious D while we play Phase 10 and Uno while drinking Moscow mules and champagne. Very specific, eh? That's like my favorite thing to do. Like just chilling out, laughing, listening to music, having fun, being carefree, eating food, and just like having a good time. Like that's the definition of a, this is stuck to my nose ring. <clears throat> Ow, this does not feel good. <laughs> that's honestly like the definition of a good time to me though. What countries do you want to visit? Um, fuck, so many. So, 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 so many. Currently, we really want to go to Japan. We were looking at South Korea yesterday. That place looks so stunning. Um, and Nicaragua and Costa Rica. And I want to go back to Mexico. Oh my God, I love it. I want to go to the Maldives. I want to go to Switzerland. I have so many places I want to go. It's just, it's unreal. Um, what did I eat for dinner? Um, I ate a charcuterie board. Thank you, Samantha. Favorite musician bands, Lana Del Rey is my always number one. I really love Hanson. Jenny says, would you ever do a meetup in Seattle? I'm close and I would love to meet you. Yes, I do want to get on that. And I think I am going to try to get that set up within the next few months. Like I really need to get on that and just do it because I've lived here for so long. Honestly, my big fear was that nobody would come, but now I feel like I'm at a point that people will come and that I'm I'm just, I need to just get over that. <laughs> Samantha says, food question, favorite Mexican dish and sides, bonus, best Mexican keto dish. Okay, well, they're both the same. So um, my favorite Mexican food, we have this restaurant around us and it is carne asada and we don't get rice and I do get beans, but I only eat a little tiny bit of them because they're totally not keto. And I got, add extra cotija cheese and there's a side of lettuce and amazing salsa and sour cream and guacamole and their carne asada is like <laughs> to die for. Okay, just a few more questions because I feel like I've been sitting here for six hours. Lainey says, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes, 100%. Pineapple belongs on pizza. I respect your decision if you don't agree. For me, pineapple absolutely belongs on pizza. It actually not only belongs on pizza, it's required on my pizza. Mariah says, um, I'm all I'm curious to what finally kickstarted your health journey. Like what was your aha moment of I have to change something? That was when I woke up one morning and my fingers were numb and I freaked out because my I couldn't even hold a makeup brush. It was really, really weird. And I Googled it, of course, Dr. Google. And it said that it could be like diabetic neuropathy. And I was like, um, excuse me. And so I scheduled a doctor's appointment. I went to the doctor that day because it freaked me out so bad. I actually had a horrifyingly bad panic attack that day um, because I was so scared that like I was fucking up my health permanently by being overweight and wow my skin feels soft. I went to the doctor and she took my blood work and we got the results back and she said your A1C levels are high and that it probably is excessive sugar and issues with your insulin resistance and PCOS driving you to diabetes and I was right on the edge of pre-diabetes and she wasn't rude about it but she was like if you are concerned about it like eat healthier you know eat low carb. Okay that's all it took was her telling me that because before that, she was always just kind of really nice to me. And I just looked at her and I was like, do I need to do something? And she was like, well, yeah, I mean, you do, should. And so that day I went to the store. I remember what I was eating. When I drove up to the doctor's office, I was eating a bag of tortilla chips. I went to the store, I bought all keto foods and I never turned back. And um, that was the aha moment when I felt like, oh, holy shit, there could be things about my health that I am causing by my gluttony and my inability to give a shit that could not, maybe not be reversible. And that was a really scary thought to me. LB says, if you were cheese, what cheese would you be? And that cheese that I would be is cheddar. 
Rekka says, would you ever adopt a child or have you made your peace with your infertility issues? Um, it's not something that we're currently looking into at all. Um, I think that adoption is absolutely beautiful. It's just not in the cards for us right now. I have different things that I'm doing and I don't think it would be a right time to bring a child into the mix. I think that adoption is so wonderful though. And for me right now though, I'm very, very okay with not having children. Gabby says, um, in one of your videos, your husband's wearing a white chapel hoodie, which is rad. Do you enjoy that kind of music too? Now, I respect his decision. I like that he likes what music he likes, but I do not like metal. I will listen to it when he's got it on, but I kind of begrudgingly sit there. I really liked music like that when I was younger, but now it just like gives me anxiety. I like to listen to like calming music, which is why I love Lana Del Rey, because I like to like... <sighs> Marguerite says, you're on death row. What is your last meal? Love you, Chrissy. Love you too. Okay, can I choose anything in the world I want? Okay, I want Pappardelle pasta but I don't want red sauce. Well, I want a red sauce one on the side, but I want this amazing stroganoff that we made. It was homemade, it was the best thing in the world. We like sauteed up mushrooms in butter with a lot of garlic, and then we did ground beef instead of strip beef. It was so fucking good. And then we added our own, like we put heavy cream in there, we sauteed, or reduced it down, and then we added sour cream, and then we, we made that, and then we put it over pappardelle pasta, and then we had a uh, garlic bread on the side, which was like a crusty sourdough bread with like amazing garlic on the top. Holy shit, that was so good, so that would 100% be in there. Um, obviously, Marie Callender's banana cream pie. I also would want a Hostess lemon pie. I love those so much. And I would want a rosemary lemonade. Tasia says, how do you see your channel evolving over the years? Are there other endeavors you wish to pursue, whether YouTube dies or survives? Also, if you become wealthy, what's the first big thing you want to use your money for? Um, how do I see my channel evolving over the years? Well, hopefully it continues to grow, and I hope that I stay exactly the same as I am. I want to just keep the humility I have, and I want to stay grounded forever I really don't believe that there will ever be a time that I'm not grounded because I grew up this way and I'm 30 so by this point I really don't see myself changing for the negative I, I don't know I just feel like everything's gonna stay the same and as far as myself goes but hopefully it just continues growing and you know I'm able to get into a position that's really good I feel like that's where I'm headed right now which is awesome are there other endeavors you wish to pursue? Um, yeah, there already are some in the works. Um, so yes, uh, definitely, for sure. What is the first big thing you'd use your money for? So if I became super wealthy, so I wanna get my stuff in order first, obviously, and um, I want to donate to local animal shelters. That's like a huge thing I want to do. Um, I want to work with local wildlife rehabs to like build them incredible flights for eagles and get them good enclosures and help them get some funding for the animals because I worked in wildlife rehab for so long and I know how low the funding is and how absolutely dire need they are for food and things for the animals and enclosures and space and employees to pay so I would love to give money to them. I don't want to be somebody that's super wealthy with big pockets running around with my own shit like obviously you can take care of yourself but also take care of your family and like get your shit together and then help other people and so I definitely have bigger plans for money and that's why I feel like it would be good to have some because I want to do good things for the world and for my community and for you know animals and people. Tiara says how did you get your channel to grow? Honestly I it just did like I worked hard I put out a lot of content and I you know, was always really active on social media and, um, you know, you make friends in the industry and then, you know, people just authentically shout you out here and there and then you, you know, it just, it just, it just happens. Like, if you just put your all into it and know, like, see what's working and not, what's not working and change it up if it's not and, and um, put in as much effort as I can and do my best to have all the things that I know make a successful YouTube channel and then the other things start falling into place. Like, do videos that you know are gonna you know do well and that you know people are searching for and you know do the content you want and add your own personality and flair into it and things will come it's just really hard there's really no way to make it happen it just happens that's why when people are like I want this many subscribers by this date it's like you have no control over that so don't like set yourself up for failure if it doesn't happen but yeah Christina says, what is the hardest part of being a YouTuber? I think I'm gonna wrap it up, wrap it up here. It's really not hard. Um, keeping yourself in the loop of things and being on social media enough to know what's going on, but to not be in it too much so that it takes up your personal life. And to have this really, it's to find balance um, because it's really hard to find balance. Like you 
a lot of times can find yourself inundated with it and then you're not spending enough time with your family or you're not in it enough and you don't know what's going on and you're not up with all the trends and things that are changing. So to stay in it and relevant and keeping things balanced is I think the most difficult part. It isn't the hate. There are so many other questions. There's literally like 500 other questions. I cannot get to them right now but maybe i'll do a separate q a or i might do a live stream or something i'm not 100 percent sure but um i appreciate you guys so much for asking so many amazing questions my light has dimmed down now but i kind of like the ambiance of this video it's like not the best well lit video but it's just more like relaxed and my bath is freezing cold so i'm gonna get out of it that sukari baby facial wow 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 um i really do feel like it resurfaced my skin like Oh, wow, I definitely have some texture because that's stupid freaking Sunday Riley stuff, but it feels so nice. So that's the end of this video. I'm so sorry if I didn't get to your question. I really appreciate all of you who did ask and I thank you guys so much for all of your support. I'm so glad you liked the last video with my sister. Um, honestly, those comments mean the world to me and to her. She was reading them and just like so beside herself because you guys are so kind. And um, I'm glad you guys liked that video and the Life's a Drag video. I really, really love doing that kind of shit. So I hope you guys like this video and uh, subscribe if you have not yet and I will see you at my next video. Bye! What have I done? Help. Help. Ah. <coughs> uh. Instagram snap. No. Kate says, what is one piece of advice that you want to give those who struggle with self-confidence? What? Like, I love Claire Sonic so much. Blake. Wow, wow, my hands down here going like this with that noise. Oh, wow, my uh, voice got that. Um, okay. There she is, she's a bit brighter. He asked me on Twitter if he wanted to collab at what? Wow, you're annoying. Stop.